Welcome to Volcanic Island! And today, spawning in the south corner of the map, we've got Knush playing in teal as the Ottomans. His opponent in the north, familiar face, but we haven't seen him for a long time, playing in red as the Mongols, we've got Kazva. Welcome, welcome everyone to Volcanic Island, a fantastic map for Age of Empires 4. We don't see it all that often, but it's on the rank ladder. And I'm super excited for this one. It's been a long time since we've seen Kazva. If you don't know, Kazva is a pro player from Age of Empires 2. I mean, he, he's been playing Age of Empires 4 as well, but, you know, you may know him from Age of Empires 2. And uh, he was at Red Bull Wallolo Legacy, you know, the premier tournament for Age of Empires 4 that's happened in recent history last year in Castle Heidelberg in Germany, and he's back playing Age of Empires 4. Maybe getting ready for the EGC TV tournaments? I suspect so. And we've got Knoosh in the south as well, who I think was on the road to Red Bull Wallolo. He's kind of getting quite close there to the top, but not quite making it to the main event. And the Ottomans versus the Mongols today on this map. Um, and if you haven't seen this map before, well, essentially, you've got woodline in the middle. People do tend to chop through if the game goes for a long time, and it's, you know, very dangerous. Kind of like hideout in many ways. Uh, except in hideout, you don't have the fish. You've got fish in the corners, well, all around the map, really. There's small deposits of them. And it's very common that people, you know, place docks to get fishing ships. As you can see, Casper is doing already in the Dark Age. And what's strong about the Mongols is often they can open up with the barracks, put some pressure on, but there's no barracks opening here for Kazva. He's focusing on his own economy first. Understandably so. No early military school for the Ottomans. He's just going to focus on his own water boom, it seems. Yeah, he's got two fishing ships already, which is very, very nice. A third one just popped out right now. And, well, both players are going to be looking to build up a strong economy in the Dark Age and get to that next stage, uh, to the Fuel Age, relatively soon, it seems. And uh, I think this matchup's an interesting one. Like, both civilizations very aggressive. Could go you know, any way, really. Both civilizations have that kind of feudal age pressure for sure, especially with the military schools, free units for the Ottomans. It could be very, very powerful. The Mongol Khan just moving his way northwards. The Mongols themselves, obviously, very much pack a punch with those uh, kind of raiding bounty if they can get involved in the bases and you know, put buildings on fire. Sometimes they can open up with an outpost rush. Doesn't look like that's the case today. Kaz is going to play this a bit more standard, a bit more different from what we expect from the Mongols. No Dark Age pressure, really. He's going to be going to the uh, the Feudal Age pretty soon, I suspect. Kaz has got plenty of gold, though. Two villages went to, up to gold pretty early. It's kind of a surprise. Um, and obviously he's going to be possibly a bit rusty coming back from Age of Empires 2. And it's going to be the Twin Minaret Madrese, the landmark for the Ottomans. Let's take a look at the fishing economy. So four fishing ships so far for Kazva and the Ottoman and the uh, the Mongols, rather. And the Ottomans have got four as well. So pretty, pretty similar. Well, it's the same, exactly. But just to see if either player goes for multiple docks. It could be an option to really get a fish boom going on. And there we go. Well, I was going to go to the next stage very nicely now. So Kazma's macro, not off at all, really. It's just had a massive deposit of food with the fish. And now it's going to go with the Deerstones landmark. No trading for him at this point. It's going to open up with a barracks. So maybe piling some pressure, getting an outpost in the feudal age. We shall see if he sends a villager or not to accompany any spearmen that might be popping out very soon. Now, what's nice about this landmark, Twin Minaret Madrese, is going to get kind of berries that spawn. Pretty fast source of food protected as well, pretty much underneath the town centre now. A surprising choice in some ways. Could potentially have gone for the trade landmark, but it's not in an ideal position with the trade kind of only here to here. It's not a very long distance. Not ideal at all. And speaking of trade, well, trade obviously gives you a lot of gold. And let's take a look at the gold spawns. 8,000 gold here, one at the back. It's going to be 4,000. I have to say, generally gold is quite hard to find on the map. It's been pretty much more kind of circular pattern around the minimap, around the wood line. So it really pays uh, to secure positions of the map. Noosh going to the feud lage now and uh, getting wheelbarrow. Pretty, pretty quickly, instantaneously, essentially, from the Twin Minaret Madrasa, which doubles up as a, as a mill. 
Now, there's actually quite a decent number of sheep hand underneath the town center for the Mongols. That's going to be a nice bit of, uh, of a boost of food income coming in mid to late game if, uh, you know, the fish run out. Because there is, there, of course, there's fish, of course, but these guys will run out eventually if, if the game gets that long, of course. And uh, there's not that much fish. But it's certainly worth, worth docking, that is for sure. And uh, what's quite nice as well, it, they can actually pass through here. So this is actually entirely passable. The four fishing ships going all the way across. Bit of pressure coming in there, though. Uh, a second dock is up and running for the Ottomans. Uh, no second dock yet for Kazva. Was that the first dock, actually? No, that's the second dock. That is indeed the second dock. Be interesting to see if Kazva does decide to dock here, because there's another deep water fish. Well, it's actually shoreline fish, technically. Uh, but they're just going to be sailing a long way to deposit the food for now. In any case, with the barracks now up and running, has he actually produced any units? Doesn't seem... Oh, he has, yeah. He's rallying in the south side of things. Looks like double produced there, it seems. Getting wheelbarrow as well. Would he be looking to get an outpost? He is indeed, so maybe opting for the military school there. You can see two villagers on stone trying to save up for that, that military school. Trying to get an outpost if he can, but an archery range is there for Noosh. And it's kind of an interesting reason... I mean, it's kind of interesting when it opened up with the barracks because you'd expect a barracks with a Dark Age rush, but obviously he's a Feudal Age rush he's going for. Uh, so surprised that he didn't go for his own horsemen or archers of his own. So he's going to keep the village alive for now, at least. Quite annoying. The Khan actually kind of aggroes the wolves by automatically shooting at them. It does kill the wolf, though. Yes, he's kind of gathering up the wolves. Just has to kill them, get them out of the way now at this point. Kazza might look to dock here with this villager. Pretty weak, 9 HP. Might as well keep him active. And does open up with the stable, so could be expecting some Keshiks. That's exactly what's happening. Keshiks will be coming out very soon. And just walling off that wood line. Nush is aware of the possible dangers of the Keshiks. Very strong unit for the Mongols at the moment. And we're getting a blacksmith to just increase the production speed of all these uh, military buildings. The military buildings, of course, also costing only 100 wood for the Ottomans. It really enables them to pack a punch in terms of production. About 31 or 32 eco units for Kazva. That's that second dot coming. Uh, actually, this is the second dot to be fair. He's really expanding quite significantly with his uh, with his fishing economy. The Ottomans have got two docks, though, up and running. A lot more fishing economy, I think. So let's take a look at the income per minute. 600 food per minute. Yeah, almost double here for the Ottomans. He really transitioned to food, and especially with these berries coming in nice and handy. And he's going to get free units. So things are actually looking pretty good here for Nusha as an opening for the Ottomans against the Mongols. Hasn't been able to do, do too much damage with this units, but he's going to try and start harassing the dock now. He's going to get a Dao, so that's going to be nice for Noosh to kind of fend this position. He should be able to get out in time. In fact, he will get out in time. So the fishing won't be denied, at least not for now. Scout there for Noosh. Going to just gather a bit of heat from the uh, the charge. And there's the Dao coming out. Going to be looking to snipe as many of the spearmen as he can. Gets a lot of damage out of that. Oh, attack move. Yep, he gets the scout in the end. Might lose this spearman, though. He does indeed. Overall, at least he's got the scout. Gets rid of that scouting information for the Ottomans. Going to have to make him produce another scout. It's not too big a deal, though, in the end of things. Double barracks. He's going to be producing a lot of spearmen here. Holy moly. And, uh, another archery range going down here. Well, has been built. But two military schools, two barracks, and an archery range. Two Keshiks might snipe the villager charge. No, not going to charge. We're going to get a couple of snipes. Yeah, it's going to kill it and back off. It does get hit by the spearman a little bit. Certainly worth it, though. Now, uh, wait, well, he's got a lot of docks here. Holy moly, what has he got? He's got one, got two, and is that third? That's a third, and he's got one down here. Four dogs here for Kazva. And uh, he's got quite the eco. 40 uh, eco lead. Well, 40 eco in total. 80 lead. Gonna snipe a couple more villagers, maybe? No, he backs away, gonna get harassed. He's gonna take out these spearmen, just takes a fight, goes around and snipes them. The villagers idled. Not wood, not a single bit of wood coming in just yet, for now, at least, until these villagers start building another lumber camp. He's gonna go towards the gold, has an outpost there, could garrison inside, does indeed. The palisade walls just making the pathing a little bit awkward for the cavalry. One of the Keshiks might go down, 2 HP on that guy, stays alive for now. And Kazva docks. On his enemy pond and does have a war joke. Probably should be attack moving this. Holy moly, come on, man. He's missed it. He's obviously doing a lot of other things, microing his units away. And uh, this is the kind of play that we love Kazza for, right? The, this kind of aggression. It's going to keep it hidden, though. Does Noosh not see this? 
Oh, he does see the dog. I don't think he sees the unit, though. Ah, oh, okay. Got a Hulk there, so he doesn't want to fight too early, because, of course, Noosh will send a villager, a villager, a fishing ship, rather, to uh, try and repair. Although, Noosh should probably push this back with a demo ship. Should take out the, the war jump quite nicely here. Did expect a big explosion. Yep, pretty much dead, and uh, Noosh will take care of that. And Kaz will... I don't know what he does from here. Might need to get demo ship himself. Will he continue to fight this? I'm not so sure. In any case, as we move our attention back onto land. Looks like the Ottomans are planning for a castle age. And, well, so are the Mongols. The Mongols are getting there. Almost 11 minutes on the clock. There is Coral Tai. Their landmark of choice there for Kazva. Plenty of food coming in as well because of the fishing ships. It's looking nice. Eco is looking very good here for, for Kazva. Now, of course, it's a limited time Eco. Like, once the fish are gone, they're gone. That's a lot of fish coming in. A lot of food coming in. So whilst Kazva is uh, quite far ahead on village account or eco count, he's kind of struggling on the military numbers to keep up. But it's not necessarily a problem because on this map, you're actually kind of quite far away from each other. It's a long distance to travel. It's like hideout. Like as the crow flies from town center to town center, it's actually not that far. Actually, to be fair, compared to hideout, it's actually a bit longer. But um, you have to go the long way around. And now with the castle age in, that's going to be nice for Kazva to upgrade his units. Let's see what he gets first. Maybe the veterancy for the Keshiks. That's what I'm expecting in any case. Still plenty of villagers on gold. Interesting that he went for the Coral Tire rather than the Step Redoubt. Because it's not like he's trading, right? Often with landmarks, you know, with, you kind of hit them depending on what you need. If you're not going for the trading, the Mongols often go Step Redoubt. But he's going to go for the Coral Tire. He wants to leverage the military bonus that comes with it. It's a very strong landmark, to be honest, this one. Very, very nice indeed. When it sets up, it makes the nearby units heal. Uh, one health bet every second, but also dishes out 20% damage. And I think that's the big, big difference with that landmark, really. Especially in the aggressive positions. All right, but speaking about aggressive positions, well, the Ottomans are going to look to do that because he's jumping down with a lot of production buildings. Two stables, two archer ranges. The blacksmith will influence those and get the production speed up. But they just probably need to garrison inside the outpost and save their lives. Spearmen are going to try and push that way. Only two of them, though, so far. And uh, still getting free units from the military school. Spearmen, mostly. And I think that's a really nice bonus that the Ottomans get. Like, they're building up their economy, but they're getting free units at the same time. Has one relic picked up already? Which is very, very nice. Nice bit of gold trickle will be coming in. I wonder whether Kaz was doing the same. Kurultai goes on the front line with a couple of Keshiks. As you can see, they're healing themselves out. There is one with two HP. Would do well to try and save that if you can. One of the Keshiks does get snared and taken out. Oh, he's going to snipe the other one. He does indeed. It's less than ideal. All right, a couple of stutters of frames there. Had to get the frozen peas out, so we're there. We're back online. Sorry about that. Well, we're getting it cracking on because there's a lot of regression coming out here for the Mongols in Kazva. He has to back off. That doesn't really have the military numbers. It does have mana times on the field, but with Noosh also in the Castle Age, he should have the tools to deal with this, and it clearly looks like he's got plenty of units out here. Noosh is doing well to fight this back, and Kazva not really getting the joy that he wants. He's being pushed back. Probably needs to run away with the Cruel Tire, otherwise he's going to risk losing it. Especially if uh, Noosh decides to surround it with his units. Does back off now. Needs to get out of there. And he does. Noosh realises now, but it's too late to get a surround. On the back of this, what does Kazva do? He's got the stronger economy. So as time progresses, he should do better. He just needs to make sure he builds up a large enough army. Let's have the prayer tent and a shaman coming out to capture some of those relics. Pretty, very key. And I like the fact that actually Kazva is attacking from the north. Because there are two relics here, which actually the Ottomans are looking to protect now. And that's going to be key to try and get that gold trickle in. So we're 15 minutes almost into the game and things are heating up slowly but surely. And uh, I think Noosh and the Ottomans are really well set up to produce a lot of units. Holy moly, he's getting the third military school now. And look at the archer range. Look at the sheer number of production buildings. Look at the wood income he's got. Holy smokes. He's getting so much wood here, Noosh. He might be looking to get a lot of archers from the archer rangers. He's not actually producing though, surprisingly enough. Not from these ones at least. He's not producing any archers. Kind of strange. He's not spending his wood. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. It's, a, it's an odd situation. That is for sure. He's got plenty of wood in the bank. Not sure why he's not producing anything. Okay, he's going for crossbows instead, obviously, to counter the Keshiks. Not a bad bad move. Oh, big demo shot. Gets a couple of spearmen out. Nice, nice, nice. Might be thinking about getting another one here, Kazva. Try to dock this pond. Manganau is on the field now. That is coming free from the Mehmed Imperial Armory. A really strong landmark for the Ottomans, giving siege engines for free. Will he get another demo ship? What's that? That's a fishing ship. Sad. He dies, I'm afraid. And, uh, I mean, the good thing is that his fishing's still alive in multiple darks to 
three. He's still got the one in the south as well. Four. I think he's docked here as well. Yeah, five docks there for Kazva. That food income looking very, very nice. You can see 1,200 food per minute. Compared to the like 450 or so odd for, for Noosh. So things looking good here for Kazva on the eco side of things. But he needs to translate into military. He has. He started to produce a lot, actually. He's equaled the numbers. He lost a lot of his army, but now he's caught up a little bit. He's got to be careful about that Mangonel, though. Springled would be nice here for as for that is for sure. Could build one on the field. The Mongols can do that. And a couple of Imams just healing up the uh, Sacred Site units. That are camping out there. The Mangonel shot's going on. Alright, well, it could be a big fight. The Mangonel. The Spearmen are going to try and dive on that. But the Spearmen for the Ottomans act as a meat shield. The Mangonel does get the shot off, but doesn't hit that much there for Kazva. And that was a relief because it's not going to get another shot. Oh, he just gets it in time. And the Spearmen for Kazva should clear this up. So nice clean up for the Mongols and... The Ottomans are going to have to go back to the drawing board and recru re uh, recuperate, rather. They have to get that army back together again. It's got plenty in reserve, though. They're building up again in the front lines. Might do well to get a keep. It's actually got plenty of stone here, Noosh. So a keep would be very strong to protect this forward gold. I think he might need it as well, because Kazva is looking hungry. Looking hungry to do some damage. I do you see the food coming in again, though, nicely for Noosh. Going over to berries. Fishing ships being targeted by the archers from the Mongols. And a couple of crossbow too. And the Kuralta on the front lines healing up. That gold is a little bit under pressure. Mon Manganel almost gets a couple of shots off. Maybe needs uh, some trebuchets here potentially. Kazva. He needs to start sieging things down. Getting the Kuralta on the front lines does get a couple of rocks from the Manganel. Heading quite far forward. Holy moly. Alright well he's captured the sacred site on the west side. Has picked up three relics Kazva in the meantime. Two for Noosh. Three for Kazva. Kind of been looking strong here for Kazva, has to be said. Looking good so far. Let's take a look at his economy. Got plenty of uh, pastures. No, just two so far. Hasn't had to rely on it. He did have a lot of sheep that he managed to get with the with the Karna early game. And look at this production. Holy smokes. Look at the units really trickling forward. He's obviously got double production, which is very, very nice. Spending all the stone on that. And it's really starting to build up. Look at that. The economy is really translated into military in the last minute or two. 62 military to 45. This could be a problem for Noosh. A lot of his fishing economy just about to go down. They dock probably won't stand for too much longer. Noosh doesn't really have the military. Does have a couple of siege engines though with Manganals. That could be key. I don't see any Springles here for the Mongols. So he's going to have to be careful, Kazza, not to lose too many units. to any Manganals that might be popping out soon. Just the one so far though, actually. I think another one is on the way. Relatively soon. Oh, Coral Tie. He needs to be careful with Kazva. He's kind of left his Coral Tie unguarded. And Demo Ship comes out. Does a bit of damage. Quite a few dead bodies there. Holy moly. All right, well, Coral Tie is still active and working. Spearman trying to chase down those Keshiks. The Mangadel trying to get out of there. But he is body blocked. I don't think he can. Can he reach that Mangadel? I think he can. And he's going to take out the Mangadel. That's absolutely huge for Noosh. That's an unfortunate situation. He needed that Mangadel. To try and push this army back because now he's got 63 military in his face only 47 in response as a couple of janissaries he spawned them i think they've come out of the uh the vizier point in any case that'll do some damage against the keshik's a very nice counter unit there's another vizier point coming in manganel comes out the right time a decent shot there but the coral die healing up units as they get damaged and that's absolutely huge but kazva can't really reach that manganel so there should be good defense here should be able to hold for now at least kazva losing numbers but he's causing damage as well at the same time there we are, Maginal getting another couple of shots, and now, well, he has to head back here, Kazva. Can't really take the engagement, nor without some Springles, and I like the Palisade Wall. Really makes it difficult for Kazva to push in here. 83 economy, it's looking good. Backs away with the Cruel Tie for now. Maginal's causing issues. There we go. Two forward siege workshops, a very common thing to do in Age of Empires 2. Is that Kazva going to be doing the same in Age of Empires 4? Really chewing through that wood as well. Would be nice to see that. Uh, just relocated. Almost going to be breaking through. Could be interesting actually if he breaks through. A more direct route. A couple of outposts coming here on the south side of things. It's a bit of an unusual thing to build a pasture there. Who knows? Where he wants to keep the villager active for as long as possible. Rather than having to walk back. Oh, the villager might be sniped. Oh, my god. I was going for the outpost instead. Alright, well, the siege workshop should go up. Just about does. Villager runs away home. And the army there for Kazva would do well to try and be aggressive. Oh, Ottoman's coming in with a keep. Will this go up, though? Because Kazva's got a lot of military. And he will see that. I don't know if he responded. I don't know if he saw it in the end. I don't know if he was quick enough. But he would do well to try and deny this. He's not actually acting on it. There's a lot of military there for Noosh as well. He's got three units. Now, the Uvu doing great work for double producing for the Mongols. But the Ottomans are getting three units from, you know, what is three military scores? Maybe possibly even four. Yeah, it is four military scores now at this point. 
And a nice nice keep. It's going to protect the gold. That's actually what he really needs at this point. I suspect he's running gold, running out of gold at his main base. He's got a decent amount, half of it left. But he's thinking long term. To bring Alden two mangonels. Kazvin needs some siege. He doesn't really have any. That's not the forward siege workshop. He needs to get a couple of sprinkles out there. He does. He is producing. All right, well, Spearman looking to torch that down. Springwood comes out. Will he take the engagement? Noosh gets the hit exactly the same time, I think. I wonder if Kazza could have got the hit first there. Oh, Manganel shot. Huge Manganel shot. Absolutely decimated so much of the army there for Kazza. He has to back off. It's absolutely huge by Noosh. This could be a big, big momentum pusher for him. He's got that kind of aggression now. He's caused so much damage. Killed a lot of units in that one hit. Crazy Manganel shot. And Kazza has to go back home. He's got... Wait. Take the Coral Tie. Don't forget about the Coral Tie. He's forgotten about it and he might lose it. No, he's going to pack up and move. Just as well. Things are heating up. And with that massive Manganel shot, it's really evened up the military numbers. Castle still does have the better economy. Oh, he's broken through. Has he broken through? Oh, it looks like it. Couple of, couple of Keshiks breaking through. I'm not sure if he came around the long way, actually, if he actually broke through. It looks as... No, no, he didn't break through. Doesn't seem like it. No, it doesn't. Just went the long way around. Anyway, Keshiks are doing decent amount of damage. Archers there as well, picking off the Janissaries as they pop out. Nice bit of raiding with these archers, actually, has to be said. Very, very nice indeed. And well, Noosh looking to take out that, that dock and has done so, causing critical damage to the economy. But it's got plenty more eco units, Kazma. Couple of Keshiks just guarding this area here. Maybe two attack in the south. Has got plenty of wood. I wonder whether they might consider dropping another town centre. Could potentially do it. Has got 156 population though, so it might be a bit overkill. But it could be an option for him. At least acting as a static defence as well, as well as, you know, producing those villages. But this is a very nice keep. I'm surprised it's... Yeah, he's, he's deactivating that now. He's going to capture it himself. Wait, what's this? I've not seen that before. That's kind of interesting. Like a little star above the imam. Interesting. Oh, let me know in the comment section below if you even know what that is. What that is. I think it's from his uh, staff, right? From his stick. I want to say staff. He's not a wizard. But you know what I mean. His stick. It looks like Kazba's on a mission to to kind of break through in the middle, though. He's sending his army on the west side. Got plenty of sprinkles now. He's uh, starting to pick up on the siege issue. Six of them. Nice number. Heading forward with outposts as well. He's going to need some trebuchets to get rid of the keep. Does he see the keep? Does he know about the keep? He must know about the keep. No, he doesn't actually. I don't think he does. He's going to get a bit of a rude awakening when he does see it. Sacred site has been captured on the west side. No, sacred site on... Oh, as I said that. He's capturing the sacred site on the east side here. Kazva. I think fish is almost running out. Yeah, pretty much done here now. And this is where the transition to pastures comes in. And I suspect that's what he's spending a lot of his wood here for Kazva. Look at the army. Holy moly. He really grouped them up together. There is the first traction trebuchet for the Mongols. Going to extend his Uvu to the stone cropping on the outside of the map. On the outskirts. He's going to be breaking through the middle soon. So I wonder whether Castle will redirect his army there. We'll have to see. There's a traction trebuchet. Oh, it's going to be a Seagate Castle for the Ottomans. And he's placed the foundation in multiple areas. A bit indecisive. Maybe look to be a bit more defensive with it now. Maybe. We should see. He's under pressure. Can't risk building it there. Oh, he's going to build it there? He's trying to. There's a lot of villages. Manganels deploy. There's only one trebuchet, though. It's going to take time to get rid of the keep. It's going to dive underneath the keep. Kazva is going to go for the Manganels with the Keshiks, but there's spearmen there. That's a bad push in. He didn't really have any right to do that, and he's lost a lot of those Keshiks. A bit kamikaze-like. Four Manganels with Janitor's garrison inside. This is an issue. Building the CK castle on the back of that. Kazva looking to try and push the issue, but I don't think he has enough. Got a couple of sprinkles. He snipes two of the Manganels. They're looking to get the other two as well. They are being focused by the Ottomans. He's picking off the Manganels. That's absolutely huge. Manganel shot does get off. Takes out a lot of the archers. But he's actually down to one Manganel. One sprinkle there for the Ottomans. Siege is certainly winning for the Mongols. He's taken out the Manganels. That gives his archers some breathing space. And there it looks to be another traction trebuchet kind of coming out on the uh, the keep. He's done a lot of damage already, those Manganels. Not enough units here for Kazva. Those Sibahi getting the better of the archers. He needs more units. He's down to 40 military. Kazva. Not taking the good engagement. He loses a traction trebuchet. I think that was. And maybe losing another. Maybe even a third. He needs to back off with these. Quite a few traction trebuchets. He needs to keep them alive. Cannot waste them. Kanush gets to that Imperial Age. That's 
going to give him some premium units. And this is looking good for Kanush. He took some really good fights. He's got the weaker economy, but the fights he's taking are absolutely fantastic. Kaz are playing the macro game. Now, could there be a world in which Kanush actually starts to trade? Where's the trading post? He could actually build a market here, to be honest. That'd be a nice spot. And trades over to him. So the Seagate Castle not only acts as like a keep, it's a defensive landmark, of course, to acts as a keep. But it also increases the aura of the... Well, within the aura, the traders get a movement speed buff by 30%. They get 8 plus armor, so really, really strong. So all keeps get that, so you could potentially build some keeps on the trade route. Spearmen are going to dive in, but they're being kited. The Lancers from the Ottomans, or the veteran Spahi, yeah, and Lancers, it seems, are kind of diving in. Spearmen engage with the Mongols on the back line. There's a couple of trebuchets. Will the trebuchets be able to take out the keep? The keep is being repaired by Nushi. He's going to run out of stone soon, though, if he's not careful. The front line is slowly collapsing, though, for the Ottomans. The Sipahi go down to the spearmen, a couple of archers, but there's still lances. Those lances are causing all sorts of trouble. They're going to take out the traction trebuchets. The traction trebuchets, trebuchets are pretty weak, actually. They've lost quite a few, but spearmen come in on the back line, from the back line, from behind the trebuchets to snipe them. And it's mostly just crossbows, but mangonels are firing for the Ottomans, and he does have... A bombard emplacement in this keep, which is going to be doing huge amounts of damage. Looks like the trebuchets will work their way through this keep, though. Not enough stone. I think Nush, hopefully, he's got a market because he's going to need to get that stone in. He's going to need to get it fast. He's going to have insufficient stone written very soon. I think that's just it there. He's not got any stone. That keeper's on fire. Would he kill it off? He will, potentially. I'm not sure. Nush, I think he just bought a couple of bit of stone, but it's not enough, and he does lose the keep. Traction trebuchets do now go back home. He's done. They've done the damage, they've done the work, and Hasva is going to need to try and regroup here a little bit. Lacking in the military numbers, plenty of eco units. And I think, I just wonder why Nusha is not producing more, more villages. Like, I guess he's only got one town centre. Hasva is on one town centre as well, and maybe it's coming down to the fishing economy. I think I would like to see Nusha transition to maybe a second town centre or some trade, because he needs to get that population up. He needs to get it fast. He's obviously focusing a lot on military, and, and rightly so. He's going to lose a lot of villagers on the front line. He's lost 13 so far already. But the Seagate Castle will keep him safe for now. A lot of trebuchets for Kazva. is certainly needed. Certainly warranted. Let's see how we're doing in the middle of the map. Okay, he's going to get a town centre there. Kazva wants to build up that economy a little bit more. Got a lot of, a lot of villagers already, but he just wants some more. Getting an outpost for some vision as well. So Kazva will see this. I'm not sure, I'm not sure Nush sees this at all. He doesn't, yeah, he has no idea. Kazva, I think he's aware. Yeah, he knows. Alright, well that outpost will go down. Did lose the village as well there, Kazva. 42 minutes to 46. Heading almost into the half, half an hour mark. Oh, it's like Kazva's kind of eyeing up to go into the middle now, it seems. And he's producing from both town centers as well. So the village elite going to start to really creep up. And I think Kazma might think about going to the Imperial Age. Look at his resources. I'm almost certain of it. It's 2,400 food. He can afford it now. Will he actually do it though? I mean, he should. He's heading towards the 200 population mark. And that's it. He's going to go with the Kaganet Palace. A lovely landmark for the Mongols. Automatically spawns diverse armies from across the Mongol Empire and its dominions. Get some crazy, crazy units from that. Hui Hui Pao you can get. And also... Which is a, like a crazy traction, tre not traction trebuchet, but a crazy trebuchet does so much damage. Even get nested bees from this. Even horse archers from the Rus and warrior monks. So lovely units can pop out from that. Automatically spawning. It looks like Noosh though wants to attack on the west side. He's starting to pile on some pressure. He's got a healthy villager, uh, military lead rather, 58. There's that Kaganet Palace. And well, that's going to buy Kazfa a lot of ability in fights if he can upgrade those units nicely. He's going to lose the over though. He needs to be careful though that Kazva doesn't kind of give away too much real estate here by keeping his army to try and focus in the middle. It does look like it's going to be an interesting push though. Noosh, does he see this? He has no clue what's happening. Kazva knows exactly what's happening. He's prepping for it even. Kazva gets to the Imperial Age. Let's see what upgrades come in. He's kind of lacking on resources though now that he's got to the Imperial Age. That's kind of critical. He needs resources. Getting it roller shutter triggers, getting two springles. But they're probably going to pop out in the worst possible situations. They're right on the front lines. It's going to lose them as soon as they, they pop out almost. Yeah, he decides to uh, 
Pack up and go. Now, I wonder whether if he unpacks them, whether those units, they start training again from the beginning or... We'll have to see. Might lose the siege workshop though, unfortunate. It's on fire. Will he send some villagers to repair? 180 village, I mean, HP. Probably could repair that if he's smart about it. Hello? Kazva, no, the path thing's really hurting him. Down to 100 HP. Will he save it? Kazva. Hello? He's unpacking. No, Kazva, save it. Save it. Save it. Kazva, it's burning. It's on flames. He's going to lose it. Oh, no. Oh, it is what it is. He's also going to lose a lot more, though, if he doesn't move these away. In the middle, though. That's where he's distracted, I think. He's going to break through really soon. He's going to pounce. And this could be really terrible for Noosh, because he's attacking on the, in the main base. The static defenses to protect. Does lose the Kuralt either. That's not ideal there for Kazva. He's coming in with Mangonels. I wonder if, Kaz if Kazva can deal with this. He's got a decent number of army, and he's got defender's advantage. If he takes out this Ottoman army, Ottomans are going to be completely defenseless in the heart of their base. He's been able to chop through. And obviously, Noosh went up to the Imperial Age with the Seagate Castle. Looking good with the Mangonels. He's not able to reach it. He's got like one or two Keshiks there. He's not able to reach it effectively. Does have a couple of Springles, but the Ottomans just have more. And this is looking a little bit rough for Kazva. He needs to survive if he can. Takes a big hit with the Mangonels. Two Mangonels still alive. Can't really get close. Huge Mangonel shot. Holy moly, it's a bit of a massacre. He lost quite a bit there. The Sapahi diving in. The Khan has been taken out. And does snipe one of the Mangonels. Possibly going to get the second. Would he get a shot, though, off? Oh, he doesn't manage it. He's going to get sniped. Going to lose the Mangonel. There is still a round there for the Ottomans, but the Ottomans losing the military. They're trickling in. What's happening in the middle? He's going to break through very, very soon. The trebuchet's unpacking as well, but looks like the Ottomans are heading back home. He's had enough. Feels like he can't take the fight, and he's probably right in picking up the numbers. At the back of this, we see trading happening. Noosh has get, he's got the memo. It's almost like he's listening to me. He does have the traders. Look at this guy, buffed up. Moving fast. How much trade is he getting? 38 gold? Not not the best. It's not the worst either. We do see Elite Sabahi. Looking great here. Clearing up the trade route. Oh, he spots this now. Noosh knows it's happening. Chop through is happening. The arm is going to head through. And look at that. 66 military. This could be a really nice way to win the game for Kazuma. If he breaks through, he has broken through. What will he build? He's going to build some outposts. Get some a strong foothold in this position. The typical Mongols things. Does have a couple of elite horse archers. Those come from the Kaganet Palace, no doubt. Could do well to take out the Imperial the uh, Imperial Army, the Mehmed Imperial Army. He's getting bombard cannons for free. So it would be nice for him to take that out. Villagers getting denied off wood. Actually, a really key issue here is wood. He's had to relocate his wood lines. Villagers coming out. They're going to be taken apart. 20 villagers Nusha's lost so far. Could be more. Set a couple of units on the west side, but uh, it's going to be focusing in the middle. You can see the massive amounts of red just, just trickling in. He's making his way through. Dishing out all sorts of damage. Kazva is definitely making some inroads. The Mehmed Imperial Armory is on fire. And if that goes down, well, that's going to be no more free siege engines for the Ottomans. And that's indeed the case. It goes down. Spearmen are going to take out these stables next. Now, this is kind of key for... Noosh, he needs to actually re-establish the production buildings on the back line somewhere in the back of his base. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose production capabilities, because if he does that, he's going to find it difficult to produce the military that he's going to need to fight this off. He does have a decent amount, though, to protect his capital town centre, but that could be the next landmark that goes down. Are there trebuchets? There are indeed. There are four traction trebuchets for the Mongols, and that's going to take out the production buildings very, very fast. It looks like it's kind of a bit of a... Holy smokes, okay. That's a lot of villagers going out to the gold there. He needs gold, actually, Noosh. Does he run out of the gold here? He has indeed. So he's going to have to expand his economy on the east side. That could be a sniping position, though, for the Mongols. He's going to send some villagers, maybe to get some more outposts. He's going to build another one to slowly build on forward. But an outpost coming in for the Ottomans, that will certainly go up first. And that will solidify the position for the, that, that gold vein. He needs the gold, that's for sure. But it's going to be coming forward soon for the Siege Workshop. A lot of them. Holy moly. He's going to go with 23. He's desperate to get the Siege Workshops down. And uh, maybe even get some outposts as well. It could be incredible if he gets cannon emplacement outposts here. Uh, that would be incredibly strong here to... To be able to push on forward and get the trebuchets further forward. Doesn't all have that much military though. 54 to 61. Defender's advantage with two bombards. Great bombards. Going to do a heck of a lot of damage. I mean those, those structures are not going to stand there for long. Now he's going to get the outpost. But the great bombards an issue. Needs more spring ults here. Asva. Will he be able to get them in time to deal with the bombards before the buildings go down? I don't think so on the east side. 
Here comes a couple of horse archers sniping villages. That's absolutely huge. And the Keshik, he's pushing Nush away from gold. But having said that, you know, trade is up. So he's getting plenty of, of gold coming in from trade. Let's take a look at how many traders he has got. It's probably best to just uh, click on the neutral market there. Let's have a click. Let's have a... Actually, we can't do it on that way. Okay, well, fine. We'll have to do it this way then. So 17 traders in total. Not too shabby. That'd be a decent amount of gold coming in. You know, help him hold. And he's holding firmly here, New. She's not backing down. Now, villages have been lost. Now, Caswell actually lost a lot of villages on the front line trying to build those two siege workshops. But he will be able to produce from two town centers to, to kind of recover. The trouble for Noosh is that if he loses villages, it's a lot more harder for him to build up those numbers again. Here come villages. Going to try and torch down the bombards. That could be an issue. There's quite a few of these archers, though. I was going to sacrifice villages here. Caswell, he's going to try and take out the bombards. Will they get away with it? He's going to snipe one at me. No, he does Yes, he's going to snipe one, possibly. Yeah, he does. Snap is not one, but at what cost? He lost so many villages there. Absolute massacre of red villagers. Down to 93. He's going to build that up again, though, soon. Ram's coming out to take out the capital town center. Will he manage it? I don't think so. Sabahi coming there. At least Sabahi as well. Huge amounts of damage output coming out here. But Kazwa's still starting to push again. He does have cannon outposts, cannon placements in the outpost, but that bombard dishing out so much damage. It's probably worth trading there to get that bombard. That great bombard. These things are really strong for the Ottomans at the moment. It's kind of the heart of the defense of this push. Zabai heading forward. Going to snipe out traction trebuchets. Oh, Nesta Bees. There is a Hui Hui power as well. Dishing out all sorts of damage. 90 siege damage compared to a traction trebuchet with uh, only 48. But he's going to lose it. Oh, that's so, so rough. He needs more units here, Kazim. It's down to 35 military. That is just not enough. It doesn't have the economy to sustain, sustain it. He's struggling. Has got a town centre. Would love to see the town centre move a bit further forward to be fair. Get a bit more map positioning. The supply going to dump underneath two outposts. There is cannon emplacements in that one. And he's denying the gold. That's kind of the key bit of detail. It does mean that uh, Noosh is reliant on trade and that takes up population space. I mean, to be fair, it's not like uh, it's not like Kazva has a passive source of gold anyway. So it's, uh, it's a, definitely a nice source of gold for the Ottomans. Still one traction trebuchet remains, but for how long we shall see. No, he's going to stay alive for now. Well, the Ottomans are starting to rebuild once again. Sending a couple of units to try and raid as best as he possibly can. Let's get away with a spearman who takes, gets taken out though. And things are starting to solidify. They're starting to stabilize again for Nusha. He's got the military schools, of course, getting those free units. 58 military to 29. Ahead on economy as well. So Kazva lost a lot on that push. The Mehmed Imperial Army has been taken out. Critical structures have been taken out. He's having to repair that town center. Overall, not too terrible, actually, for Nusha. I think Kazva lost a lot on the tail end of that push. And uh, the outpost holding on for now. Nesta Bees getting the action. Villagers garrisoning inside the town centre. It's not really a push that the supply can deal on their own. Needs some siege here, Nusha. It does have one of the bombards, great bombards. Taking out all sorts of damage on the outpost. Holy smokes, did he just one-shot that? I think it was a bit damaged already, but still, holy smokes. Well, 38 minutes on the, on the clock, and well, we have no idea really who's going to win this one, because it's pretty neck and neck in terms of economy. Pretty neck and neck in terms of military. And when it comes to the super late game, I do fancy the Ottomans' chances. He's got trade up. He's got military scores going. Here comes the engagement. And Nesta Bees gets off on the uh, Janissaries there. Elite Janissaries. Those Janissaries will rip through those veteran horsemen. Veteran horsemen are going to climb on top of the Sapahi though. And Rams coming forward for Kazva. That's going to be huge. The Kazva, Kazva causing all sorts of problems with those Rams. The pathing is kind of crazy. Archers on the back line there by Kazva. He's got incendiary arrows. They'll be sniping a lot of the Janissaries, but a lot of the cavalry has gone down for the Mongols. Mostly spearmen and archers now with the with the rams moving forward. Mehmed Imperial Armory almost back up again, or well, halfway. But it might be going down pretty soon with these rams coming forward. Massive push by Kazva. Military really starting to push forward. The bombard is still alive. It's getting repaired as well. That's a huge, huge difference there. That Keeping that thing alive is, is massive for Noosh and the Ottomans. You get another two, three of those. It could do, dish out a lot of damage, but it's not going to come for free. Because Mehmed Imperial Army has been taken down for the second time in the game. Now 52 minutes for Kazva. He's piling on all sorts of pressure. Coming forward again. It would be nice to see more outposts from Kazva this time. To try and solidify this ground for the uh, trebuchets to push forward again. Just has only one trebuchet for now, but it's mostly rams. That's what's dishing out the problems. Villagers might do well to try and torch down these rams. Quite a lot of these rams coming forward from the east side as well. Six and seven in total. A lot of supply still remain. Military numbers starting to dwindle again for Kazva. Mostly archers. A couple of uh, veteran horsemen. 
He kind of needs this elite upgrade. I'm not sure why he hasn't been able to get the elite upgrade for that. It's kind of rough, actually, when you think about it. Would he ever queue it? Because he kind of needs it. It'd be useful to have, for sure. Now, the town center will go down. Uh, but he will lose uh, a couple of these rounds. He's going to take out the mosque as well. That's just kind of critical. He's taking out some gold income. That's nice. He's got two of the uh, sec he's got two of the landmarks so far. What's happening here, actually? Okay, he's going to deny some of the gold there. Going to try and get some gold of his own, Noosh. Now, has he rebuilt the uh, Kurultai? Not yet. Looks like it's coming forward soon. But he has taken out the... Um, the Mehmet Imperial Armory. He's taking out the Capital Town Center. He's going to take out the Twin Minaret Madrasi. Could he look to snipe out the uh, Seagate Castle? If he can take that, that could be absolutely huge. That would be the landmark victory that he's maybe hoping for. Numbers pretty equal all around. The Rams taking out some crit crit critical infrastructure, but they will be going down. I like what I see from Kazwa. He's building up an army before he pushes in for another wave. Got two Hui Hui Pao trebuchets. These guys are so, so strong. He needs to make sure these guys stay alive, though. They get new starting to stabilize again. Not the first time we've said that. The Rams are kind of running into problems. Keep defending the trade, defending the farms. As we built the mosque, moving the relics further back, it seems. Giving a bit of map control away, but he will be, he will be able to stabilize. That's the, key, that's the key detail. Running in with a couple of veteran horsemen. Kazma, please upgrade these things, damn it. He's uh, stubborn on the veterancy of these. Has been in the Imperial Age for a long period of time, but not upgraded them just yet. Maybe just using them as a bit of a meat shield, but still. Now the Hui Hui Power have unpacked. Is he focusing on the Seagate Castle? No, he hasn't got that kind of rage. He's focusing on houses, it seems, at this point. There's a lot of spearmen. He needs to protect that, that trebuchet, though. There's two trebuchets, the Hui Hui Power. Super important. Might be sniped by the Bombards. Oh, he knows about the trade, I think. Getting sniped by Spearmen, those veteran horsemen. Spearmen engaging against the Janissaries, not ideal, but there are archers on the back line. Here come the Sipahi. The Spearmen will do well to snipe the Sipahi, but he's just losing too many. He's diving a bit too far deep. I think he's trying to get the Kuril to happen again on online, Kazma. But he's going to be running into all sorts of problems. The Sipahi going to try and snipe the Hui Hui Bao. Has three of them. He might lose them. That's actually kind of painful. Only has archers. That's not going to deal with the Sipahi anytime soon. He's going to lose one. He's going to lose two. That's massive losses. He can't just train these. He has to wait for them to Kaganut and to give them again. He does lose three of them. Oof. We talked about how important it was for him to keep those alive and he just didn't manage it. But he has got the three landmarks he needs. This is being rebuilt again though, the Twin Minaret Madrese. Give the Ottomans a bit more breathing space. Building up again with the army, elite archers, spearmen, outposts coming up for Noosh. Nothing happening in the outskirts of the map. Does deactivate the sacred site, sees the trade going up and running. He might want to try and deny that somehow, but Coral Tide is going to be lost again. I mean, he, needs to, he needs to take that out. Kazma has not noticed it. Archers will be sniping a lot of villagers. Noosh down to 73 villagers. He sacrificed a lot there. I think a couple of the traders were lost as well, and that's absolutely huge. That's a problem. Noosh doesn't have the capability to reproduce those villagers anytime soon. He's lost the capital town centre, right? Has he rebuilt it? He's not rebuilt it yet. He's not got any villager... Reduction capability, no town centre anywhere else as far as I can see. That's actually really critical. He's reliant on trade. That's his only economy at this point that can scale up. He needs scalable economy. He needs that town centre up. He needs it fast. Sabahi going to dive on the archers. But Kazma is losing so much military. He's trying to snipe out the bombard. Will he get it? I'm not sure he will. Nesta Bees takes it out. And that's huge. He sacrificed a lot for that. Only 22 military remain here for Kazva. And this gives Ottomans a window of opportunity to come back. He's going to lose the uh, Nesta Bees quite possibly to the Spearmen. We shall see. Has to back off. Because he's got so low military number there, Kazva, it's going to give time for Noosh to rebuild. He's got 77 military. This is looking to be a crazy game. We'll lose that Coral Tie eventually. On Center going to be up and running very soon. Holy smokes. I mean, can you guys predict who's going to win this? It's absolutely crazy. Siege goes down again. For the Mongols. Does just need to snipe one more landmark, though. Oh, well, TC is going to be coming up soon. Oh, villagers being sniped again. 61 villagers. This is the issue for the Ottomans. He's not got capability to producing villagers when they loses them. And so that economy will start to weaken. It does have a bit of a bank, though. 1,200 food, 600 gold. Not too, not too shabby. 
Not too terrible at all. Army coming forward for Kazva. Mostly uh, veteran horsemen still. And elite spearmen. I wonder if he's just forgotten to upgrade that because it seems unintentional. There's no real reason why he wouldn't want elite horsemen here. Maybe he doesn't want to sack. Maybe he, he just feels like he, he can deal with the overkill from the Janissaries, maybe. In any case, he's going to dive this a little bit further forward. He's going to take out a lot of the Janissaries. Spearmen there, enough to deal damage against the Sepahi, but not enough in numbers. And uh, Kazva gets cleaned up again. Only 23 military. Just doesn't have the economy, it seems, Kazva. Does have a hui hui power again. Yeah, he's just struggling to, to replenish the army, Kazva. Let's have some elite horse archers from the Kaganet Palace. This could go anyway. 46 minutes on the clock. Sort of calm down a little bit. Let's see how many traders that Nusha's got. Well, that's not ideal. Not that many. 29. Well, I say that, but I take that back. 29 in total. To change player positions there. And uh, the good thing for Nusha is he's just got so much military in the field. The military school is coming in clutch. He does need to rebuild that economy, though. I'd love to see him add another two or three town centers, possibly on the wood line. Because it feels like that could be like a, a rare resource at, the, at any moment now. A decent number of Hui Hui Pao, two of them. A couple of rams could dish out a lot of damage. Here he's moving forward again. 32 military. Pretty ballsy, actually, to go in with this. It doesn't really have the numbers. He doesn't seem to care. Janissar is going to rip through the cavalry, though. Spearman diving in. Horse archers on the back line. I mean, Kazo has to back off. He really can't take that fight. All right. Well, the town center has been built. Is up and running again. I don't think the Twin Minaret and Madrasa is still up yet. Anyway, we do see elite lances coming in from the Ottomans. That's the key bit of detail. So very premium unit, a very strong unit, very population efficient. 87 military with Kazma. It's starting to be produced that military slowly but surely, but I don't know if he's going to be able to hold here. Will the Ottomans push back through the middle? Quite possibly. Which would be kind of crazy when you think that Kazma has almost double the economy in terms of villager numbers, at least. Or at least eco unit numbers. Cannon placements will be getting a huge amounts of damage if you can get focused on the Janissaries themselves. So Bahai diving in. He's going to snipe the Hui Hui Pao. Going to go straight for them. Maybe one will go down. There's no one repairing. Spearmen are engaging against the Sepai. Takes out one. I think the other one will survive for now. He does. Just as well for, for the Mongols. He needs to maintain this push. He needs the siege to stay alive. He's really struggling to get the military numbers and sustain them here, Kazva. Heading to almost the 50th minute of the game. Could this be an hour-long game? Crazy game so far, though. Ooh, I think we've got to catch our breath. A lot of production on the front lines of the Kazma. He's just really struggled to push through this choke point. Ooh, sending in some elite palace guards coming in from the Kaganet Palace, no doubt. They will be picked apart pretty soon. I wonder whether... I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that Noosh hasn't walled up. Just even some palisade walls here, just to secure. There's not much he can do down the middle, though. The trouble for Noosh, though, is if he... It feels like he's on a timer, right? Because Kazva's economy is just so much stronger. The longer this goes, Kazva's going to be able to produce that military again. Look at the resources. Holy smokes. Coming in. 2,700 food per minute. He must have a lot of pastures, a lot of sheep. Yeah, check this out. 20 villagers there. 27 there so a lot on food and it's really starting to build up the military numbers i think one or two more fights and noosh might run out of steam he's coming on the west side we're taking out the outpost but the cannon and placements inside these things will dish out a lot of damage so it won't be without losses he will lose the outpost eventually but uh he's gonna dish out a lot of damage whilst doing it whilst losing it okay cars are heading down in the middle again 100 military versus 63 noosh has the military numbers to possibly to hold and defend Let's see if it will be enough, but with Nesta B's involved, that could change the fight. We'll have to see. He's diving in a little bit here, Kazva. Noosh reluctant to take the engagement. I mean, the Janissaries could get a good value against the Horse Archers. Trade is going to be an issue. Going to disrupt the trade route here. And Noosh is really backing off. He wants as much military to take a critical fight, you feel. Kazva is population capped, though, so he won't mind fighting this at all. He's going to take out trade. That's critical. Gold is going to be difficult to come by for the Ottomans. He's got plenty of gold coming in at the moment, but if he lose the traders, he won't. 
It's his primary source of gold. Janissaries are at the mercy of the archers within Cindy Arrows. The Sapai and the Lancers do wrap around against the archers, though. That's going to be problematic for the Kazva. He doesn't have much of a front line there at all. The Spearmen are being distracted. They're taking out the trade first. I think he's going to go for the eco approach. Only 52 economy here for Nu. She's being strangulated out of the resources. There's going to be a famine for the Ottoman Empire. He's going to rebuild that Kuraltai and get it online again. And, uh, well, Kazva's full population, which is incredibly strong. Does have a Huihui power, another one coming on along as well. Great Bombard. Might just snipe out the Cruel type if he's not careful. Kazva needs to pull that back if he's not winning to lose it. Spearman just trying to harass villagers there. It's not really going to work too well for the Ottomans. And this is problematic. 46 villagers. This could be the beginning of the end as we head into the 52nd minute almost. The, uh, the Keshiks acting as a front line. Not too much there on the back line. A couple of hand cannoneers. 53 military to 92 is half the military for Kazu, but he's just he's just banging his head against the meat grinder. A lot of Janissaries. He would do well to get a couple of archers here at Kazva. Maybe a Manganel or two would help. There are two great bombards trying to get a keep to defend his position. Does have a couple of keeps though. That'll take some time to get through. Great Bombard fires off. Here come the Elite Horsemen now. Has been upgraded finally, but they're going to run into m massive Janissaries. Going to be an absolute massacre of those Horsemen. They just can't get into those Janissaries. Janissaries counter them so, so hard. A couple of hand cannons on the back line. Spearman might look to take out the Great Bombard, but if he does, he's going to pick apart, get picked apart by the Janissaries. And yeah, those Spearmen, they, they perished very quickly. Down to 46 military again. Kaz was being raided by a couple of Sapahi. The trouble is it's a very condensed economy, right? All the food is underneath the town center. And so unless the Ottomans sacrifice a lot, he's not going to dish out too much damage. Some Sipahi coming on the east side on that woodline in the villages there. The Bombard is trying to push this back. Wee wee pow, they are firing off. rams trying to take out the uh, production if those guys are left untouched which they're not now Sapahi or Elite Lancers are going to take those out but the production building is slowly trickling down in numbers for the Ottomans is really struggling in that front it's going to struggle to produce the military it does have some food in the bank two bombards holding the line oh this is a good raid though Elite Lancers this is going to take time to deal with it's going to lose a lot here Kazva it's keeping him safe for now, garrisoning inside the town centres. Two Hui Hui Power heading eastwards. Where are these guys going? Alright, well, need to protect them wherever they're going. Now, just one more landmark left. He's taken out the town centre, taken out the Twin Minaret Madrasa, taken out the Mehmed Imperial Army, just the Seagate Castle left. Lancers are taken apart now. Spearmen track them down. The economy will be back on online again. The trouble for the Ottomans, he has never really replaced the town centres. That's what his undoing is possibly going to be here. Three, four Springles look to snipe out the brick bombards. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think the Springles will go down. There's no meat shield here. It's going to ride right into those knights. Those lances from the Ottoman Spearmen. They're just sitting there watching their siege being ripped apart. 55 military to 74. Again, a couple of lances wrapping around. Spearmen will take care of this, though. No emplacements in this outpost. But the Spearmen managing to defend that condensed economy. 61 military to 69. The meat grinder continues. And I, I fear for Noosh. Although he's got plenty of food in the bank and the trade is very effective. Slowly but surely his economy is being dwindled. Where is the army going for Kazva on the east side? Hui Hui Pao. Trying to take out the keep on the east side. He's trying to deny the trade, isn't he? Looks to be the case. But he has left himself a little bit exposed in the middle. There's a lot of villagers here. Uh-oh. Noosh. He's taking out a lot of villagers. Kazva, is he throwing the game? Down to 100 villagers now. 106, but of course Noosh has half the number of villages. It's going to be difficult for Noosh to sustain this. Does have Janissaries in front of them are some Spearmen. Spearmen for Kazva trying to protect the two Hui Hui Pao. Takes out the keep. Going to be focusing on the next keep. Spearmen engaging against Spearmen. Great bombard there for Noosh. Not able to push any further, but look at this. Military numbers, 80 there for Kazva. The economy has come online. The numbers really starting to spiral out of control. 55 minutes on the clock. Spearman protecting the Hui Hui Pao. That's the key significant detail. This is a difficult situation for Noosh. He needs to stop the siege push. Now our push will be going down next. And then the keep. 
in the middle of the map. Wow, this is a problematic situation for the Ottomans. The Mongols pushing hard. Even with trash units, spearmen, they're going in. A couple of uh, palace guards mixed in with that, though. 85 military to 46. He is struggling, Noosh. I think he might tap out soon. It's half the economy, half the military. A couple of lancers. They're not going to be able to deal with the Huifi power unless the spearmen aren't paying attention. They're not paying attention. Oh, no. Kazwa is going to lose the Huifi power for free, but the other one should survive. Yep. The elite lancers do get taken apart. They have been conquered, but now he's going to dive underneath this this keep. Going to snipe a great bombard. This could be the end of the game because it doesn't feel like Noosh has much steam in the locker. It does have a decent amount of food income. But that could go down with the spearman now. Going to attack the trade. He's going right for it. Does have a couple of lancers, but that's not really the unit he wants to defend this. There's probably enough lancers to deal with these spearmen, potentially, but not without huge casualties in the middle of the map. It's pretty empty. He's going to go straight for the wood line. The trouble is, where does Noosh get wood, love? wood from? Yeah, Nush is going to struggle for wood. Let's take a look. I don't think he's got anyone on wood. He doesn't doesn't have anyone on gold. Only 28 villages on food. Yeah, he's certainly struggling now. Trade has been uh, disrupted somewhat. The knights, the lancers backing off. Does have the keep still alive. It does have a couple of spearmen though with the Hui Hui Pao. We'll be able to keep it alive for now for a little bit at least. Wait until the Janissaries get there. I think it might be sniped by the knights, but a lot of the knights will go down. The lancers rather. Oh, this is a big push with Spearman and the Elite Horseman. This could be the end of the game. He's going to take out a lot of the production and the trade. Noosh is struggling population-wise. Bombard is there to dish out damage. Does a lot of AoE damage, but I think Noosh might be tapping out the game soon. The push has succeeded really well for the Mongols. He's pushed really hard, sustained, sustained pushes, and looks like the economy is going to be triumphant for the Mongols in the end. All these villages. Holy smokes, these guys are idle. Oh, I'll get back to work. We've got a war to win. In any case... Once the military schools go down, the production will be ceased. There's absolute mayhem, the heart of the economy, what's left of it for the Ottomans. As we head into almost the 58th minute of the game, the economy for the Ottomans totally in tatters. And at this point, I think the Mongols has like, can just trickle in units as much as he wants to. Just just throw everything at the, at the, at the meat grinder. A couple of archers still there, and Spim could be heading into the fight. But I think once Noosh zooms out, he sees the bigger picture, he probably will be tapping out. Just a matter of time now. I think 38 economy. It's not going to be enough to produce anything. Once he starts running out of gold. Once he starts running out of food. This is going to be rough. Let's have one more Great Bombard. I have to say the Great Bombard has been a great unit for the Ottomans today. And here comes the massive last push you feel with the elite horsemen. Elite archers. Elite spearmen. A couple of springles to snipe the siege. And maybe with the Great Bombard going down. That could be the end of the game. But this looks like a big death push. Does he have Siege behind this? I'm not so sure. He doesn't actually have Siege behind this, Kazva. Maybe it doesn't matter. I'm going to take out the Twin Minaret Madrasa next. And, well, where do you go here if you're Ganoush? He does have a couple of Janissaries. But with 39 economy, once he leaves this army, I don't think he's going to be able to rebuild it. And Kazva just banging his head against the Ottoman windows. Rushing in with spearmen, rushing in with horsemen. Might be with the Twin Minaret Madressa going down. That might be the signal for Noosh to tap out. We will see. Still has trade though. A couple of knights. There it is though. That won't be enough, those knights. Noosh taps out after what's pretty much an hour long game. A crazy back and forth on Volcanic Island. It was certainly a huge eruption of a match on this map. True to the name. I hope you guys enjoyed the castle game. Take care and see you next time.